It's that time of the year again and today I want to talk with you about every filmmaker's favorite topic, gear. But not simply about any pieces of gear. I want to share the pieces of gear that really helped me on my filmmaking journey this year, not only in terms of improving my filmmaking skills, but also financially. So here are the pieces of gear that helped me to make more money as a filmmaker in 2023. A good laugh mic, for example, like the Rode Wireless Mic Pro, I think it is. It has 32-bit float, which is incredible. And I don't know in how many situations this actually literally saved me. I uh, had a couple of different interview situations this year with client projects that were a nightmare for every filmmaker. They were in very unpredictable situations, for example, in supermarkets, outside in the parking lot, on rooftops with windy noises. And I gotta say, in combination with some skillful editing in DaVinci Resolve, but in massively thanks to the 30-bit float of the Rode Wireless Mic Pro, it really gave me always very usable results, which would have been unthinkable a few years back. I have been in situations like that many times before and often the video quality massively suffered in the end and sometimes the videos ended up not being usable by the client. But with the new wireless mic pro from Rode, this simply is not the case anymore. And I can really say it saved my bum in so many difficult situations this year. This doesn't mean that you necessarily have to get that same microphone, but I would highly recommend it. And I also use other microphones like the DJI mic and I was not really satisfied, but I gotta say this lav mic compared to a shotgun mic, seems very comparable and sounds fantastic. The next one is a high quality VND or variable ND filter. And now you might think, duh, but there's actually a huge difference in between the high expensive brands as well. For example, when I started out, I just simply thought as long as you get a brand recognized VND, it's not gonna make a huge difference. Only when I started shooting on my red Komodo, which doesn't have an infrared filter, I noticed that there is a huge difference between those different filters. For example, I used the Polar Pro and the Freewell, and even though they seemingly seemed okay, with higher stops, I started to experience some greenish tintish color shifts, which are very easy to fix in post, uh, but my opinion are not ideal. You always wanna get the most cleanest image out of your camera. So that's why I switched to the Nisi Swift system, the True Color Vario VND, I think it's called, and I gotta say, out of the three, this is the most high quality VND I've ever used so far, especially for my red Komodo, like I said, which doesn't have a red filter. It has a very cool feature. I can simply use the VND filter in front of my lens, and then I can take the IR cut filter from Nisi, which is an infrared cut filter, and put it in front of the lens, which helps me to get all this infrared out of my footage, and also really helps me to prevent that color shifting in some of the colors that are tedious, tedious, tedious is to get out of your colors. For example, if you ever shot cars and had to edit those car windows that have this green, disgustingly look in them, trust me, this is a game changer. The next piece of gear is not really a hardware or a gear piece, it's more of a software. And the software I'm talking about is Pitch. Pitch is a design software which really helps you to create stunning and professionally looking pitch decks. This really makes it so much easier to, in a fast time, design a very nice and professional looking pitch deck that helps you to land more clients and to convince the client that you are the right person for this job. And I cannot tell you, having those professional looking pitch decks really made a big difference this year in my business. Pitch offers you a huge selection of templates in their library and in the templates themselves, they have a huge selection of different layouts you can choose from. And all of those layouts work in a drag and drop fashion. So it's very simple and easy to use and make sure that your layouts look professional. The other software that really helped me to make more money this year was Millenote. And I think you probably heard of Millenote, but in my opinion, it's one of the best tools for film Filmmakers. I cannot stress enough how important pre-production is. I would say you should spend more pre-production on the actual shooting and maybe even more than on the editing process. Having a proper pre-production process where you can easily put a mood board together, a storyboard and also a shot list while planning locations, the mood you want to go for and simply having everything in a visual aspect to be planned in one software is a huge game changer for me. So that's why I love using Milanote because it gives me the freedom to put my ideas from my head on a screen, which I can simply share with clients as a PDF or as a shared link. The next piece of gear is a good monitor. And if you don't have a good monitor yet, 
I don't know what you're doing, especially if you're using a cinema lens which has manual focus. The monitor really helps you with focus peaking or focus assisting features to nail focus all the time. But there's nothing worse than capturing a stunning and beautiful shot, but then later on realizing that your subject or whatever you're focusing on was not perfectly in focus and the shot is simply not usable. It also really helps you to expose your shots correctly with exposure assisting features like false color or simply importing a lot to see how the final image later going to look while editing. So if you don't have a monitor yet, I really highly recommend getting one in 2024. This will make a huge difference in your filmmaking career and also will make filming so much more easier and so much more fun. Brands I can recommend are Port Keys and Small HD. Port Keys, I honestly gotta say, for the money you spend, you get a really high quality monitor. And I mean, Small HD, they're expensive for a reason, but they have fantastic monitors as well. Oh yeah, and also Atomos Ninjas, definitely can't go wrong with that. I tried all of these three, Port Keys, Small HD and Atomos, and honestly, all of them work fantastic. It simply depends on which budget you have. And the next one is my red Komodo. And I know this sounds super cliche, but unfortunately in the client's eyes, brand recognition is a real thing and the brand name holds a lot of weight to it. I honestly did get some jobs be just because of this camera and you can't expect the client to do the research and actually understand that a small mirrorless camera like the Sony a7S III can literally, I mean honestly, produce the same results as this big red Komodo cinema camera. The only thing they care about that the money they want to spend or the marketing budget that they have is well spent. And I mean, the client just simply feels more comfortable when you have a big cinema camera on set than with a small mirrorless body, even though you can achieve the same results with either of them. The other thing is that I honestly believe you can outgrow your camera. Doesn't mean that I have outgrown my Sony cameras, but if you wanna improve as a filmmaker, sometimes getting a new camera is not just about getting better specs or better features. Sometimes it pushes you to shoot in a different way. For example, the Red Komodo has a way slower and more deliberate approach than for example, a Sony mirrorless camera where I can simply throw on a lens and run and gun it. With the Red Komodo, I really have to focus on how I properly frame those shots, how I light those shots, how's the composition looking to make the shot look the best and to get the most out of this amazing camera. But enough talk about money and spending money on gear. If you want to know how to improve your filmmaking skills without breaking the bank or spending a dime, this video might be just the right one for you. 